So it's time to wire up the sensors for this CNC mill. The design I've gone with is to use five proximity sensors, the NPN sensors, and one Z-touch plate. The touch plate comes from uh, CNC router parts, and I think I'll probably have a whole separate video, maybe even a series, because uh, I have to do some coding within Mach 4 to get this to work. Uh, it's a pretty neat piece of kit here. So uh, I think that'll be separate. So this is the proximity sensor that's mounted to the x-axis plate. And so instead of the design in where I would have two proximity sensors, one at each end of the uh, gantry here, I'm going to have one central one, and it's going to detect both extremes. And so as it comes close to this bracket that I fabricated, it'll turn on. Um, and then there's another one down at the other end to do the same. And so this, in the software, I'm the, the idea is to configure this to be both the limit switch and the home switch. And so we'll see how this goes. And then on the gantry, this is for the y-axis. This is the setup I have here. I haven't adjusted this yet. Um, this is another NPN proximity sensor. Um, and so I've made this bracket that brings, here we'll be detecting this aluminum uh, wheel. And so when you're detecting a non-ferrous metal, you have to be much closer. And so uh, I guess today I'm gonna find out how close that actually is. It's also possible that I can sense off this steel pinion rather than this aluminum wheel, but the aluminum wheel was, was the, the goal just due to the spacing issues I was dealing with there. And so the on this side of the gantry there's actually another one here and the, the goal here is to actually have gantry squaring at some point so that as the machine homes maybe it will also square itself to make sure. And then in the back there's another one on this side and that's just for the extreme uh, positive value of Y. And basically those, oh yeah, I should mention the, the Z axis has one in the, uh, in the extreme up direction and there's no, there's no proximity sensor on the, on the down. We'll be using this uh, Z touch plate for that. So that's the high altitude view. So I'll, <laughs> I have all the wires just looping on the floor here. And the goal for today is to get them into the enclosure and get their, I think they're, they're shielded as well and their shields are braided. So I think I'll probably have to, it'll be a little fussier to deal with those because I don't think they have a drain wire. So I may have to solder little pigtails for them. All right, this is the data sheet for the proximity sensors I'm using. So I got these proximity sensors as a kit from CNC router parts. You get the sensors as well as the shielded cable. They come come with these pretty nice connectors, which I'll be using on the on the sensor side. And then as the cables enter the enclosure, I'll be cutting them off uh, as everything in my box comes through those uh, that gland system. Uh, these are NPN sensors. There's also PNP that are out there. Um, and if you're going to use the PMDX424, you'll, you'll need an extra daughter board if you get the other style of sensor. Um, but it's so the, if you want it to work right out of the box, the NPN is the way to go. And then these are normally open. And there's also normally closed versions of NPN sensors. So if you're going to buy those off the interweb somewhere, uh, just be aware of that. Um, I also noticed that as of this video, the... CNC router parts has changed their kit a little bit. They don't. They seem to have a separate style of sensor. Um, they also they have this barrel one, but they also have a square one. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, so this is a schematic. They also have a, a pin out of the cable. There was a, a fourth wire here. I think it was a white one, and I cut it off, as it's not not used. And so with this schematic, this shows you a, a more Typical setup, and this little box here is a, 
uh, a pull down resistor they have between the positive and the signal wire. Um, we will not be using that setup um, for the PMDX424. So we will instead be bringing in 12 volt from the from the input terminals on the PMDX424. And then uh, we're also bringing ground from those input blocks. And then the signal wire goes back to the input block uh, on the PMDX424. And essentially when a, when a piece of metal comes to the end of the proximity sensor, this switch essentially is closed and it pulls that input pin to ground. And that's the signal. So here it's inside the enclosure and this block here is for all my sensors. So I have the five proximity sensors and then one uh, for that touch plate. And uh, it's already wired up internally. And so basically this bank becomes the, the sense wire. This is the positive 12 volt and this is the, the ground basically. And so I'll wire that up quick and be back in a sec. All right. So here it is wired up. Um, I did not connect the shield to the ground as this is just a test to see if how close we have to get to that aluminum block. So I went to test the proximity sensor and it wasn't working. And then I remembered that I don't think I've put any fuses in any of my circuits. So each one of the proximity sensors is gonna be individually fused here. So if we open up one here, Like looking into a black abyss. You cannot see anything, can you? So you can probably see, hopefully you can see the fuse holder is empty there. <laughs> if we come back to the spec sheet, we see that uh, the operating current is zero to 200 milliamps. So I have my little fuse ball kit here. These are five by 20 millimeter fuses. You know, I think this entire box cost a few bucks. So, uh, we can try this little guy. I'll, I'll put in one of these. Anyway, now you can see there's a fuse in there. Should have power. What a concept. All right, so now we have power to the proximity sensor and I have just a scrap piece of steel here. I hope you can see the little LED light that's coming on right there. So now I guess we get to see how close this aluminum has to be. <laughs> Obviously a lot closer than that. Let me move it. Uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of amazed and surprised a little bit. You can see that's about the amount of distance, boop, where it's detecting essentially aluminum. That's uh, according to my caliper, which I primitively measured here. It's about uh, four millimeters. So that's actually a, a lot further away than I was expecting for some reason. I don't know why. All right, let's go see what it looks like in Mach 4. All right, so here we have Mach 4. Uh, if you're going to use the PMDX 424, uh, PMDX writes a plugin for Mach 4, and I've installed it here, and it's configurable under Configure Plugins PMDX Smart Bob. And it has quite a few tabs, device, motor config, feature config, encoder config, spindle config, performance, and debug. Um, and, but what we came here for was this show real-time input output status. So we click that, brings up this screen, and it shows all the inputs and outputs in real time. And so with our proximity sensor, I've attached it to input two here. And so I'm expecting when the uh, metal comes to the proximity sensor that this input two will turn red. So let's go make that happen. Okay. A 
hard to see the light there, but it's coming on. Alright, all right, I guess that's it for this one. I'll try to cram all these wires into this enclosure off camera, and uh, I guess we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.